Hello, I'm Jack Gelstrap, pastor of First Baptist Church in Abilene, Kansas, and I'm here to talk today about Sunday school, specifically about how Sunday school can be cool. And I know you're thinking, huh? Sunday school? Cool? No? Uh-uh. Sunday school's boring. Um, I mean, after all, it's got the word school in it. Ah! But actually, Sunday school can sometimes be really fun. And we had a good example of that in our youth Sunday school class this last Sunday. I had so much fun in Sunday school, and I just wanted to share something about that. Now, there were only three of us in Sunday school this week, which was too bad. Uh, usually we have five, but um, some people were gone. So it was uh, our Sunday school teacher, Nancy, and myself, and our young friend, Eric. Um, and Nancy had been teaching us the last couple of weeks about... Um, about different Bible reference books, books that you can use to help you study the Bible and get more out of it, learn more about it. And we were learning some pretty complicated, cool stuff, like about how to use commentaries, um, which they expand on the scripture and, and flesh it out and tell you more about it. Bible dictionaries, they explain the meaning of words in the scripture. Um, concordances, which tell you where to find all the different places where you can find a particular word. And we learned about Bible atlases, which um, show you maps of the scripture. Pretty cool stuff right there. So anyway, we had been studying these about these different things, and we chose a particular passage of scripture, which was the story of the uh, Ethiopian eunuch and Philip, the disciple of Jesus, in Acts chapter 8, uh, and so we got out and we read the story, and we uh, were picking out things in it that we thought we might want to learn more about, things that we could we, do, we didn't understand. So one thing we did was we looked up these words, um, and we used a concordance to learn some different locations of things in the Bible. We used Strong's exhaustive concordance of the Bible, which was right there on our shelf in the library, which is where we have our class. Strong's exhaust. You know why it's called the Exhaustive Concordance? Because it's so big, and it's really exhausting to try to pick it up. Um, and we also used the New Bible Dictionary, in which we looked up a couple of things. Like, for instance, eunuch. Who is this eunuch? Um, well, a eunuch, we found, is uh, somebody who in ancient times, in the, in the ancient East, was um, often considered a very trustworthy servant, um, for important people. Somebody you could really put in um, charge of stuff. And it was very often very um, a noteworthy profession to be a eunuch. Um, but of course, there was a downside to um, being a eunuch also. <laughs> but we, we're not going to go into that right now. No. Um, made us a little bit, us guys, a little bit uncomfortable. Um, so this eunuch was a high official in the court of, uh, we also looked up Candace. Um, who, that was not a name, actually, but it was a title of the Queen of Ethiopia at that time. And we also looked up in the, um, in the Bible Atlas the location of ancient Ethiopia. You see, there's the big map um, of the entire Bible lands at that point in time. And we had to look up ancient Ethiopia, which is slightly different than modern Ethiopia, and so it would have been down here south of uh, oh, wait over here down here south of uh, Egypt down the Nile River. And we also looked up um, Palestine in New Testament times, and we found the locations of Jerusalem and Gaza down here on the sea. See Jerusalem up here and Gaza down here. So that was fun. The absolute coolest part was when we got to draw our map. Here we had Palestine at the, um, in the New Testament area up here, and um, down here in northeastern Egypt, and down the Nile River we had Ethiopia, and up here we had the Mediterranean Sea, but more about that later. So, we had to start our journey in Jerusalem where the eunuch had come to worship because he was a God-fearer, um, somebody who worshipped the Hebrew God, and he had come to worship in their temple. 
there in Jerusalem, but he was going to Gaza, which of course was a seaport um, or near the sea, um, so he could continue his journey back to Ethiopia. So we started in Jerusalem, and Eric said, um, "Hey, do you want me to do the Indiana Jones um, line thing that shows where you're going on the map?" We said, "Sure." So he started humming and drawing. Dun da dun da dun da da. Dun da dun da dun da 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 dun da dun da dun da 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 da da. And along the way, of course, we had to draw pictures of. There's the Ethiopian's chariot, and there's Philip, and over here was the Holy Spirit, represented by a dove, who Eric gave an olive branch, like from the story of Noah, and. um and then and a halo, just in case anybody had any doubts. It's not just any old bird. That's the Holy Spirit, um, and who told Philip to go and talk to the Ethiopian eunuch in his chariot. And of course, we're in a desert. And what do you find in a desert? You got you find cactuses, cacti. And oh wait, what's that over here? It's the Grand Canyon. Um, right about here, we're guessing is where. Philip and the where he stopped the Ethiopian to talk, and then um, we had to find out, you know, okay, the Ethiopian had said there's water right over here. What hinders me from being baptized? And Philip said nothing, and so they um, went down because he believed in um, Jesus, the Son of God. Um, they went down and baptized him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and he um, became a believer. Uh, we found that there were some little rivers. Um, crossing their path and so we drew one of those rivers and there's where he might have got baptized and then he would have continued on his trip and he went, would have gone on to Gaza and then he would have got in a ship probably on the Mediterranean and sailed down to the um, mouth of the Nile and gone down the Nile dun da dun da dun da da dun da da dun da dun da da dun da dun da on a boat down the Nile River down to ancient Ethiopia, where he went back to his job working for um, Candace, the queen, and I drew, um, there's Candace, the queen, and she's in her castle, because, of course, she's a queen, and she's got to have a castle. Um, I'm not sure what this is over here. I think maybe this is where Nancy drew the location of the Ark of the Covenant, supposedly hidden in Ethiopia according to some people. And up here we drew the Mediterranean Sea with some things that you might find on the sea. A boat, of course. Ships go on the sea. Sharks! Ah! Dun, 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 dun. And, last but not least, submarines. So, um, as you can see, we had an awful lot of fun. So we really had a pretty fun time and kudos to Nancy for coming up with such a fun and creative lesson. And it was awesome, you know, getting to learn how to use um, concordances and commentaries and Bible atlases and dictionaries and all that stuff that some a lot of people don't use until they're in seminary um, to study the Bible. But anybody can use it right there in your church library. Um, but the best part about it, the thing that really made it fun, was when we got to do something creative ourselves and just kind of um, get goofy with it but get creative and and that was what made it awesome that was what made Sunday school cool I thank you for joining me for Sunday school can be cool hope that you'll get to join me for another installment sometime soon and you have a really wonderful day God bless you